Hello, and welcome to Book Chat, a quick little video where staff from the Skokie Public Library talk about what they hope to read, what they have been reading, and books that they love. I'm Allison, I'm an advisory librarian, and joining me today are Becca, as always, and today we're so excited to have Lukey with us. So without further ado, Lukey, take it away. Hi, I'm Lukey, and I am an advisory specialist in the adult uh, patron engagement department. Um, and the book that I'm really excited to talk about today is The Island of Sea Women by Lisa C. Um, it is historical fiction set in Korea on the island of Jeju. Um, and there are three major components to this book. I found it just a fascinating read. Um, it's about a women's diving collective, um, which I knew nothing about. And this collective began about 200 years ago where they free dive, that is without oxygen, into the sea to collect um, shellfish mostly um, to sell and support their families. So it's considered a matrifocal um, society. The men take care of the children while the women are diving. Um, and it's still going on today, although it's, uh, it's gotten really, it's really shrunk. Um, there aren't nearly as many people doing it now, women doing it. Um, so there's that aspect to it, which was a whole cultural thing that I knew nothing about. Um, and it was really fun to learn about that. Um, it's also about the friendship between two Korean uh, girls who then grow up, um, become women. And it's, and it's about betrayal, loyalty, forgiveness. There's a really sad story um, there. And then it's also historical stuff about Jeju, which again, I knew nothing about, um, particularly in the years 1948, 49, um, when there was an uprising, when you know, communism was getting a foothold in the North and there was an uprising and the Korean people actually put like there were massacres against their own people. So there is that really difficult um, aspect to the book um, with some horrific events, but it's not the totality of the book. And the, the book is just a really interesting, fascinating read. Um, and I encourage you to read it if you like historical fiction um, and you like learning about, you know, a new culture that, I mean, all the stuff about the diving is just completely amazing. So I highly recommend it. The Island of Sea Women. Luki, that sounds so good. And I cannot wait to read it. Um, so the book I'm going to talk about today, I'm going a little bit rogue here. And I'm going to talk about a cookbook. It's called Simply Julia, 110 Recipes for Healthy Comfort Food. And it's written by Julia Tertian. And I am obsessed with it. So typically I'm a little wary of healthy cookbooks because what is healthy for you may not be healthy for me and vice versa. Um, plus they tend to play into the vulnerability many of us feel in regards to food and body shame, as well as diet culture, which is a $70 billion industry um, that often tells us that fat equals bad or unlovable when in actuality that is very far from the truth. The healthy in this book is inspired by Julia's wife, Grace, who lives with type 1 diabetes. So the recipes are um, all work within what they call their low carb, high quality lifestyle, meaning they use a light hand with the butter and the sour cream, but they aren't afraid to use them. Um, there is something for everyone in this cookbook. There are 87 vegetarian recipes. There are 42 vegan recipes. 21 additional dairy and egg-free recipes, and 106 gluten-free recipes. So something for everyone. Um, and along with all those recipes, which are all relatively easy and not too time-consuming in my limited experience of doing about three or four of them now, um, Juliet sprinkled in a lot of really personal essays that range from her anxiety and her relationship with her body and with food to how much she loves her gas grill. It's really just wonderful and I love it. Um, there's a photo spread that speaks to me in particular. It features the roasted cauliflower and red cabbage tacos. And in the background of that picture, there are two cans of seltzer. One's a LaCroix, one's a Polar. And if you love seltzer like me, this book will speak to you as well. Um, 
The recipes I've made so far that are keepers for my family are the ricotta and potato chip fish cakes, the kale and mushroom pot pie, which is so, so good. Um, and then we're having the French onion meatloaf and the white pizza style kale tonight. And my mouth is watering as I think about it. And before I drool on camera, I'm going to send it over to Becca. Thank you, Allison. So um, I can contest to the fact that Allison is obsessed because um, she has written to me about this book enough um, that I have started following Julia on um, social media. And I also um, received the cookbook from the Easter Bunny this weekend. Um, and um, you know, I was really sold because um, I'm a vegetarian. So it's often hard to find a cookbook that to me is worth the price because of the limited amount of things from it that I can actually eat. Um, so I've been looking through it and I just really love the kind of more recent style. I think it's more recent, at least um, it's, it's not something that I've been super familiar with previously of kind of combining personal experience and essay with a cookbook um, to kind of tell you um, where these recipes came from and, and what they mean to the author slash chef slash cook. Um, and I just think to me, it's like when it feels a little bit more like when a friend shares a recipe with you. Um, and, and I really appreciate, I really appreciate that. And the, the photos that are in the book are really, really lovely. Um, so I am, I'm really excited to dig in. Um, Allison has, has really sold me on that book and I hope she sold all of you as well. Um, so I'm going to talk about a book that is, um, it's, it's not the same, but like they live in the same world. Um, which is um, what we don't talk about when we talk about fat by um, Aubrey Gordon. Um, it's a collection, it's a nonfiction book as well. Um, and it is a collection of essays. Um, and it's kind of part memoir, part medical history. It's very heavily research based, which I really appreciate. And then that research is backed by her own experience. So that's like where the memoir part comes in. Um, Aubrey Gordon for a very long time lived on the internet under the pseudonym Your Fat Friend. Um, so I followed her for a long time and didn't know who she was. Um, and so much of that was because she wanted to talk freely about the experience of living in a fat body um, without having her name out there because of the ridicule that can go along with that, especially um, in internet spaces, and it allowed her to speak pretty candidly about things that she had experienced, um, things that other people had brought to her, and that sort of thing. And the culmination of that experience, I think, is all reflected in this book. Um, she's currently, um, she kind of came out <laughs> um, from behind her pseudonym. Um, she's also um, LGBTQIA, so um, in both respects. But um, she, she started writing for Self Magazine, and so she chose, I don't know if she chose or they chose that um, she couldn't do that anonymously. So, um, and I'm sure the book played into that as well. Um, but it's all about her experience. Um, she talks a lot about how, how difficult it is to um, find a doctor that will actually listen to you um, and take your issues seriously. She talks about medication that she was prescribed that actually was making her more sick because they just assumed that she needed it because she was fat. Um, it, it talks a lot about the way that society sees fat people um, as burdens, but she talks about the complexities of, of fatness, um, how much of it actually just comes down to genetics. Um, and there's not a lot of things that you can do about that. Um, it talks about how you cannot judge a human um, and their health based on the way that they look. Um, and it's just really interesting. It goes all into the history of diet culture, which, which Allison alluded to. Um, and I've also been listening to her podcast um, that she co-hosts um, called Maintenance Phase, which is all about like debunking um, things like the BMI. So I don't know, BMI has been talked about a lot recently because um, it impacts where you fall on the COVID list in terms of getting an immunization. But like this, the science behind it is almost non-existent. Um, and she talks about that a lot in this book. And she talks about diets and like how um, diet culture is 
part of capitalism. And so like really it doesn't do them any good for you to lose weight and keep the weight off because then they don't have that revenue stream anymore. And it's just really interesting. Um, when I finished it, to me, it was a book that I didn't know that I needed, but I was so glad that was written. Um, it validated so much of my life experience. Um, and I just related to it in such a huge way. And I think that um, it's a part of intersectionality and social justice that isn't talked about a lot. Um, and it impacts so heavily um, women of color, especially black women and um, just fat phobia in general. And um, I just thought it was such a good read and it was so different than so many of the other books, um, nonfiction books that I've read. Um, in the last few years. So that is um, What We Don't Talk About When We Talk About Fat by Aubrey Gordon. Um, I listened to the audiobook. It's read by the author. It's fabulous. Um, and that's it for today. So we wanted to thank Luki for joining us today. We've been trying to get her for a year and we finally got her. Um, so that's really exciting. Thanks as always to Allison um, for her time. Um, and if you need help with accessing any of the books that we spoke about today. There'll be links below, but you can also reach out to us via chat or the phone. Um, send us an email at matchmanagers at skokielibrary.info. And we're happy to help you however we can. Um, we can't wait to talk about books with you in person, but until then, take care and goodbye.